enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For our Metropolitan Teacon, our Archbishop Alexander, for the honorable priests of the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For this country, its president, for all civil authorities and for the armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord of mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, in ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. I live by the 
sing praises to my God while I am being. Would not your trust in princes and sons of men, in whom there is no salvation? When his breath he parts, he returns to his earth, on that very day his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps his faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressor, who who are hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord disciples who are not found, the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners, he upholds the widow and the fatherless, for the way of the wicked he will bring to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. My God, O Zion, to all generations. No one never enough to wait his own ages, amen. Only be God.
For thou art given the nation of our souls and bodies of Christ our God, and unto thee we send our glory, together with thy Father, who is everlasting, and that all the good and life, bringing spirit now and ever unto you, ages of ages. Westmaster, he who proclaims the glad tidings of the holy apostle and evangelist Mark. May God, the prayers of the holy voice and the law of the apostle and evangelist Mark, and may he proclaim the glad tidings with great power. To the fulfillment of the gospel of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us attend, let us listen to the holy gospel. Be and to thy spirit. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to thee, O Capernaum, after some days, and it was heard that it was, he was in the house immediately, and he gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door, and he preached the word to them. When they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men, and when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they had covered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this.
person opens up the door and he sees a nun in the room and he says, what are you doing? And she says, I'm on a journey. Please close the door. <laughs> close the door. I, I don't know about you, but it, I, it's an incredibly powerful thing to tell, to say to other people, please pray for me. I don't know, sometimes I have a very bad day, so I tell, ask just a few people, just in the monastery, I say, oh, you know, can you say a prayer for me? I've had a rough day. Sure. By the time I get to the third or the fourth person, I feel better. Just by saying that, there's a little bit of humility in that, and God hears the prayers of His church. We don't have to be saints to pray and to make a difference. If we all pray for each other, we're all going to make it. There's an incredible strength in the church and in the prayers of each other. Just that power of the blessing that we can offer other people through our prayers. God bless them, God help them, God have mercy upon them. Lord, remember thy servant so and so. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon such and such, so and so. These prayers, especially when we do it together, are incredibly powerful. I have seen mountains moved by the simple prayers of simple people. Not great saints, but me and you. Let us never underestimate that power, that when we ask someone else to pray for us, how effectual that can be. Especially if we're struggling, if we're sick. Just asking a few people to pray for us can move mountains and make the difference between life and death. Because God hears the prayers of His people. Me and you. We're His people. And today the church offers to for our consideration this great saint, St. Gregory Palamas. His relics are in Thessalonica, Thessaloniki, and when you go there to see them, it's almost like they're just light. He is like the saint of the uncreated light. He, he was the advocate of the uncreated light, and I experienced that God can be known, that you can know God, that I can know God, and that we have to know God in order to be saved. Our salvation as Orthodox Christian is to know God. And through this knowledge, to be united with Him, because in the biblical sense, you know, Christ says this in the 17th chapter of the Gospel, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only eternal God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In this context of knowledge or knowing, biblical context is communion. Adam knew Eve, and he bore a son. And so to know God is to commune with God. And this knowledge of God makes us eternal, and that is salvation. And one of the hallmarks of this experience is the experience of seeing God as light. And it's not a created light, it's an uncreated light. Just like St. Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus, saw the light, and he said to the light, Who are you? And the light said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. That light is actually the kingdom, St. Gregory Palamas says. And it's this hallmark experience of the Orthodox faith that is the confirmation of the truth of Orthodoxy. Because from the beginning of time to the present day, it's the same experience. Moses saw the same light. Isaiah the prophet saw the same light. Ezekiel saw the same vision, the same light. St. Paul encountered that same light, that uncreated light of the kingdom. And all the way to the very present day, whether it's St. Gregory Palamas or St. Silouan, Father Saproni of Essex, they saw the same light. They encountered the same God. They had the same experience. From the prophets to the present, it's the same kingdom. It's the same uncreated light. So St. Gregory Palamas was one of those advocates of this. You know, we all don't have to have this experience of the light, but it will be something that we experience on different levels. Whether it's like St. Gregory Palamas who actually has the vision, they say it's one in, one in a generation, maybe a few in a generation. That's all that's needed because it's enough for everybody. They become a wellspring of light, and we still remember him to this day, he was so great in that regard. But all of us will encounter and experience that light, because Christ is the light of the world. 
As we encounter Christ, we are illumined. The darkness of our heart is dispelled, and we are given knowledge of the truth through this light. Whether we see it or not, it is the same light that's acting on all of us. Just like the sunshine, Christ is the spiritual son of the entire universe. And so St. Gregory Paul of us, two things that he said that were very, very important. In this experience of God, it's not something that we have in our head. It's something that happens deep in our heart. The thought of God is not the true knowledge of God or the experience of God. And we have to realize that knowing God in our head is not the same as knowing Him in our heart. And we're not talking about a superficial knowledge of the heart, but rather in the very depths of our being, the kingdom of God is revealed in all of its power. <clears throat> it is an experience that becomes so vast and so deep and so profoundly transformative that it can rock the entire world, like just like it did for the apostles. Twelve men turned the entire world upside down and gave us the gospel <clears throat> through the encounter of this truth, through the encounter of this experience. In the very depth of their heart, they manifested the kingdom of God to the world. And so, we need the knowledge of the head. It's not like we sideline it, but the knowledge of the heart is the primary key. The head is just an afterthought. That's what we see in the creed, right? Why did it take them four centuries to actually make the creed? Well, it was a deep experience of the kingdom in the heart. that was eventually elucidated through words. Precisely, but it wasn't the main point. It was the afterthought of the experience of that deep sense of the kingdom in the heart. So, St. Gregory Paul must defend that ardently against those who said, all you need to do is know God with your head and that's enough. We don't believe that. And St. Gregory Paul of us was in prison because he said no. He was tormented to no end. He was moved around, he was kidnapped by Muslims, his life was very difficult. He had a very difficult life, and yet through it all, he revealed and maintained that Orthodox faith. So that's why we commemorate him on the second Sunday of Great Lent as we try to renew our faith and renew our understanding of what our church is, why we're doing what we're doing, who Jesus Christ is, who the Holy Trinity is, all of those things as we revisit those again. During this time of life, we try to pray and fast and try to go more deeply into the life of the church. The church offers us St. Gregory Palamas for consideration. The other thing that he said was this. He says, we don't just imitate God, but we rather participate in God. Our life of, of, of salvation is not one of just trying to be imitating Jesus but rather participating in the very life of Christ through the sacraments of the church, his very body and blood, baptism, chrismation, confession. It's through this true and authentic participation of the life of God that we become saved. And as St. Peter says in his second epistle, the first chapter, he says, To you are given exceedingly great and precious promises that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. This is salvation. This is what it means to be saved in an orthodox context. It's not imitation. We're not just like unto Christ. We actually participate in the very life of Christ himself. And through that are empowered to do amazing things like keep the commandments. Because the commandments on a human level are impossible. It's impossible to love your enemies without Christ helping you. And in fact... The admonition to love one's enemies, no other religion asks us to do this, by the way. Did you know that? On the human level, it's insane. On the divine level, it makes us like God. And only God can ask us to do it, and only God can empower us to do it. And that is how we know that our faith is true. Because only God can ask us to do that. Because only God can make us and enable us to do that. And it's by doing it that we actually become truly like unto God and participate in God, and through that we become saved. So the commandments are not just, by the way, we're not just moralists. We don't just say, do this, don't do that. Maybe do this, maybe do that. We're not like that. They're, the reason of the commandments, the commandments are actually like a revelation of God's life as He lives. And in fact, the cross... 
Here's the cross right here. Huh? You're on the cross. I am on the cross. He's a priest. He's one of our seminarians. This is one of our latest models. <laughs> the warranty is expired by the way. But this is a revelation of God's life. How he is, how he lives, and what his life is like for us as well. His life will always be a cross for us because it's too intense. It's too much. His life... You know, in the Old Testament, when somebody encountered God, sometimes if, if it was not in the right way, they could kill themselves. It was too much for them to encounter the living God. For us, the life of God will always be a cross. It will always be difficult. It will always be something more than we can handle because it's God. How can it be otherwise? If we can barely look at the sun in the sky, how can we barely look at the face of God who made the sun? The spiritual sun. And so as we consider today our life in the church, our life on Lent, we need to reconsider how just how different our Orthodox faith is, not only from the world, but even from all the other confessions. The Protestants and the Catholics are very, very different. Very different. It's apples and oranges. It's baseball and football. We can't play baseball in a football field. It's that different. As we look again at our faith, let us all continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And through that knowledge, not just in our head, but deep in our heart, we'll be informed by the grace of God. And through that, we will be saved. Amen.
Here's the other two teachers, Metropolitan of All America in Canada, Eddie Jimenez Alexander, Archbishop of Toledo, the Bulgarian Diocese. May the Lord of God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Now the priest of the diaconate of Christ, all of us will priest in monastic order. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. President of our country, all those in civil authority, but most especially those who are serving in the armed forces. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. All those who do good and honorable works in this holy and honorable house, for the church council, the choir, the altar servers, all those who devote their time, talents, and treasures to the upbringing of this holy community. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. For those who have asked for us to pray for them, Lord, and holy need. For St. Egon's Monastery, St. Egon's Seminary, may the Lord God remember them in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. All those afflicted with incurable diseases, widows, orphans, victims, and their sad families, those who are suffering under persecution for the faith, most especially those who are suffering in Syria, Egypt, the Middle East, Ukraine, Russia, all those who are under the threat of ISIS, may the Lord God remember them in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. All of our departed mothers, brothers, fathers, sisters, and kindred be part of this life and the hope of the resurrection. May the Lord God remember them in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. You and all Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages.
profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other in our own life unto Christ our God.
the spirit of truth again, the sonship, the pleasure of future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life great power, the doctrine of sanctification, through whom every creature of reason and understanding worships thee and always seems to be a hymn of glory, the offerings of thy servants. Thou art praised by angels, archangels, angels, and angels, with the power of the glorious powers, the many eyes share of him round about the sand of seraphim, one with six wings, the other with six wings, with two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet. As if we are alive, crying to one another with unceasing voices, and ever resounding praises, singing the triumph in fear, shouting from the way and singing. Yes, yes, yes.
awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks unto the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Asking that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God.
days of the great Archbishop of Caesarea and Cappadocia, whose liturgy we celebrate today. I'm St. Mary Magdalene Page, and this is our holy community. I'm St. Gregory Palamas, and we commemorate today. All the holy, righteous ancestors of God, joy, human, and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us for as much as he is good and the lover of mankind. 